G'day viewers, I thought I'd share this Baptist um, little off-grid job with you because uh, I've used a couple of different products here. Um, so I first featured this actual system on this property uh, a while ago in another video because we were originally using a battery pack out of a forklift. Turns out, unbeknownst to my client, that uh, that battery pack, lead acid, turned out to be stuffed so we couldn't use it. Uh, so that was a bit of a waste. Um, it had been sitting around for a couple of years, not charged, and um, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, once it was put under load, it, it was it was stuffed. Um, <coughs> so what what uh, my client's done is he's purchased these batteries, which I wasn't real keen on, the Rurixu batteries. Um, they appear to be a, a fairly decent quality battery. I know there's other videos out there featuring these in a teardown um, and um, they got reasonable reviews. Um, but it's worth noting that these particular batteries aren't on the Clean Energy Council approved products list. So if you did want to claim STCs for an off-grid system using these batteries, you actually wouldn't be able to. But in this instance, there are no solar panels. Uh, we're using a generator to charge the batteries during the day, which you can hear out the back there, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, because we're on a um, industrial area, or commercial area, it's a small business out in a quarry. And um, the generator will be running during the day at this stage anyway and there's no uh, facility for solar at this stage. So there's a caretaker on site, and just so that generator's not running at night and they've got security lights and cameras and everything, um, this was the chosen method for now. So the generator runs during the day regardless uh, for other power, and we've just tapped into that to charge the batteries, and then this is the main source of power for the caretaker's uh, donger at night. Um, so just on the Rixu batteries, uh, I got sent some information from China, which they were quite helpful to deal with, but there's no technical support which is Australian based, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, all the products I use, I look for what sort of support they have in Australia, uh, because it's when things go wrong that you need that support and that uh, warranty service. But in all fairness, um, as usual with products like this, the communication is via WhatsApp. Uh, they were quite responsive and it's a Saturday today and they still sent me information today. Um, but some of the information was conflicting. So with these batteries with a Victron product, uh, the main communication lead here, this end is a standard communication socket, which is a T568B. And then on the other end that plugs into the servo, you're only using the blue and the blue trace wire, and they need to go in terminal seven and eight. It doesn't mention that on the YouTube video, um, but it does mention it if you're connecting to a color control GX, but we're not in this instance, we're using the servo. So if you do watch that YouTube video, just be aware that the comms cable needs to be the same as the information that they give you for the color control GX from Victron. Um, that had me stumped for a little while and uh, the servo, because the, the reason for all that, the reason there's a comms cable between the battery and the servo is because these are what's called a managed battery. And they communicate to the servo which then controls the whole system as to you know charging and discharging and so forth. Um, so that comms cable needs to be um, correct so that you can see the battery listed in the menu there. If you start your Victron system up and you don't see the battery listed there, you've got it wrong. So you need to go back and just check that comms cable, which is, as often the case, usually the way. It's either a firmware update or a comms cable, uh, most times. Um, but uh, so everything at the moment seems to be going well. The generator's running, we're charging the batteries. Um, and that will uh, supply the caretaker with power at night, which is in a donga behind the car there. Um, now this is all going to be expanded. He's actually got another two of these battery packs. Um, so yeah, again, not my favourite battery. I'm not going to say they're good. I'm not going to say they're bad. 
uh, because they've literally just been installed. So to me, a good battery is one that lasts you know, 10 years without issue um, and that has good warranty support and technical support based in Australia, not overseas. But so far, so good. We'll see what happens in another 10 years. Um, so the inverter is a Victron MultiPlus 2. As you can see, there's no solar charging uh, facility here. I've installed a modem, so I've got the system online and we've got our little switchboard there. And the servo wasn't originally part of this plan or this layout. This was originally just a very basic uh, system to run off the forklift battery pack. But um, the Rixi batteries do require the servo. So I had to install that. So that's why I've mounted it in there, which actually has turned out pretty good, I reckon instead of just mounting it on the panel and having wires and shit going everywhere. That's still quite neat, I'm reasonably happy with that. And we got the touch screen there for all our control. Because the modem is inside a C container, I've mounted an external antenna so that we still got signal when it's all locked up and closed. Eventually, as this system grows um, with more battery packs, um, this will have an air conditioner in it. But for now, with this little system, it's installed in the shade as well. It'll, it'll be fine in this container. Um, so I'll show you the generator. So it's excavation equipment. tell you a bit about it so again the generator is uh, a Chinese generator imported and they have a distributor over in Queensland I'm in Western Australia um, so they don't have an outlet here that was transported to my client again that wasn't my generator of choice that's for sure um, the quality of it is pretty poor um, and it's obviously not going to be a pure sine wave generator either um, which can cause some issues with electronics and so forth that said, uh, I needed some information uh, for the auto start function so that the generator can call up, uh, sorry, so the servo can call up the generator and we can charge the batteries as we're doing now. I needed some information because it wasn't clear in the manual, which was sort of broken English. Um, so I rang the distributor in Australia and they referred me to their electrician that they use who promptly emailed me the required information so I could sort up, sort out the auto start feature on the generator. Um, so that was all good, all done. Don't expect the generator to last too long. Like I said, it's pretty poor quality, but it's, uh, it's installed, it's doing its thing for now. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, righto, I think that's about it. Got any questions? Uh, you can contact me in the comments. And um, yeah, that's it. Have a good day.